everyone, welcome to the October 2023 Product Spotlight video where I'm walking you through some of the biggest updates from HubSpot in the last month. Now in Marketing Hub, you have the ability to send emails. It's a very important marketing function. But to protect your deliverability and our own sender reputation, we have to make sure we put limitations in place when emails are not being delivered. So if you are sending a lot of emails and your deliverability performance is not great, there have been banners and warnings to tell you about the situation, but we've heard from a lot of you, they're confusing, the language is not helpful. So we've clarified those to help you understand the severity of the situation and the likelihood of you being put in probation and your sending ability being suspended. So hopefully there are no surprises for you now. If you are seeing these banners, they should be much more helpful, letting you know what you need to do and how you can rectify the situation. So here I am on the leads management page inside the new prospecting workspace. And what you're seeing here is a list of leads assigned to me. Now, ownership for a lead is inherited from the contact. Contact and company records are still the, the heart and soul of your HubSpot architecture, but this lead management thing is a layer that's put on top of that. So Victor and Zeus and Paul, these are all contacts who are assigned to me, but they've been pulled into the prospecting workspace for me to prospect to them. Now, if we go to the lead settings page, we're gonna see in the background how contacts are pulled into this leads experience. And it's mostly this setting right here. We are gonna create a lead based on lifecycle stage and I have that set to marketing qualified lead. So anytime a contact enters the marketing qualified lead uh, lifecycle stage, they're gonna get pulled into that prospecting workspace on that lead screen. You can add multiple stages here if you want. Um, it's pretty flexible and as contacts enter those stages, they'll automatically be moved into this new experience. So if we go back to the prospecting page and head over to leads, again, we're seeing all these leads that are assigned to me. Now, let's say I am working one of these. Um, when a lead first gets moved in, uh, it is in this new stage, that is automatic. Then if I send an email or make a phone call, it will move all by itself to the attempting stage. So this is very similar to the lifecycle status property that's been on contacts for a long time, but now it's fully automatic. And then if I get a reply email or a phone call is labeled as connected or I log a meeting, we're gonna automatically move to connected, which is important because we can filter these to just look at certain stages. And over here on the summary page, I can see a full list of all my new leads, all my attempting leads, all my connected leads, and I can choose to work through just one category of these leads. Now, those first three stages are fully automated. The one thing I as a salesperson need to do is decide whether this lead is qualified or disqualified. If I say qualified, I'm going to be dropped immediately into the create a deal flow because the thought is once a lead is qualified, they need to be an opportunity and have a deal to track that sale in progress. The other option is disqualified. So if I say they are disqualified, I have to give a reason why. These options are customizable, but let's say it was bad timing, they want me to come back three months from now. Um, I can add notes if I want. Let's say it's their, it's their busy season, uh, and I can disqualify this lead. Once you disqualify a lead, they're removed from your view so you can focus on the ones that are still progressing forward, and that task we set will automatically bring them back up when it's time to check in again. In CMS Hub, we've introduced new modules to let contacts export and delete their data. So if you have a page where your contacts can manage their subscription information, you can add this module to it to let them export their data that they have provided to you and delete it if they want. This is an important thing for GDPR and other privacy measures, and it's a great piece of flexibility for you to offer to your contacts. The biggest announcement for Commerce Hub this month is that it's now Commerce Hub. It's a brand new hub, the thing we have been calling HubSpot Payments for a long time now, we are calling a hub, and we're excited to grow it up and make it a full product line. If you are in the US and you would like to start collecting payments through HubSpot, come check it out. This is the page where you can set up payments inside of your HubSpot portal. There's a couple ways to get there. First, you can go to sales and go to payments and click on payments. Or if you're on the settings page already, you can just find the payments section and you'll be brought to this page. In order to start collecting payments through HubSpot, you need to go through a quick qualification process and you need to connect a bank account so we have a place to deposit your funds. The page I showed you will walk you through that and you can get set up pretty quickly. 
In Operations Hub, we've introduced an option for you or other users to get notified when a particular workflow has issues. And the great news is, you don't have to have Operations Hub to use this feature. All enterprise accounts have access to it. So here we are in a workflow that I want to get notified about if anything goes wrong with it. I can come to this Settings and Notifications tab, and under Notifications, I can select myself as a person who needs to be notified, and I can toggle on this new when this workflow needs review option. So anytime we suspect something is wrong with this workflow, I will get notified right away. Once you set that up on the workflows you really care about, you can go to your personal notification settings to decide how you will be notified. Whether that's an email notification, an in-app notification, a Slack notification, there are lots of options. You choose the one that'll work best for you. In smart CRM functionality, the CRM record page editor is now fully out of beta and it is a joy to use. Check this out. So here I am on the contact settings page, but you can do this for any object type. If you go to the record customization tab, you can come over to the customize the middle column option. In professional enterprise, you can customize this for specific teams, but let's just look at the default view. Here I am editing the default view for my contacts and I can choose what cards are going to appear here in the overview tab and I can even add new tabs if I want to. October PSV tab. And when you create a new tab, you get to decide what goes on it. There are all these pre-made cards you can use, but you can also create a card fully from scratch. So if you want to add an association table or a list, if you want to have data highlights, the properties card, or you can add reports to this. The ability to add a single object report directly to an individual object record is huge. Let me show you an example I created. So here I am on a company record and you can see I've added this custom leads tab. So using some of the functionality from the new leads management experience inside Sales Hub, I created a leads report where I can see how many leads I am currently working and how many activities I have logged for those leads in this quarter so far. In HubSpot's App Marketplace, we have a new integration for Webflow. Take a look at this. This integration makes it easy to connect Webflow and HubSpot together. So if you're using HubSpot forms, you can embed and style them inside Webflow. If you're using Webflow forms, you can connect them to HubSpot. And there are many other options. As with all of our integrations, you can connect it in just a few clicks from right here in the Marketplace. That's all the updates we're gonna cover in this video, but as always, there are a ton of other updates we can't get to. HubSpot continues to move along very quickly, so be sure to visit hubspot.com new to see the full list of what came out in October.